And I'm, I'm going to ask you to join me in welcoming back on stage Ava de Berlin. Thank you. Hi. my collaborators up to, uh, to do this Q&A with me with Alex, who's just, I mean, the cutest, the voice and the whistle. <laughs> I'm really glad I don't have a big suitcase, I take a lot from me, but anyway. Uh, um, uh, the producer, uh, my producing partner on this film, Howard Barish, the Toronto boy from home. Uh, our other producers on this film, uh, Paul Barnes and Delaine Jones. Um, our editor of the film, no one, no one gives the editor any love. Clay was over this stuff. Uh, Victor Abbott, a good friend of Victor Abbott, our editor. Um, and our beautiful cast. Um, uh, uh, who played um, the man who played uh, Derek in the film? A good friend of mine. It's the second film we've worked on together. Amari Hardwick. <laughs> and um, an actor who I've come to to love and, and be a good friend with. Uh, I'm so fortunate to have him in my life now. Um, played uh, Brian, the bus driver who complicates things. David Ayala. <laughs> Our Jewel, our Jim, our Ruby, and Nancy Cornholly. First film ever in every single frame of the movie. you to raise your hands as high as you can, to speak as loud as you can, to be as brief as you can, so we can have as many question, questions as we can. Alright? And I might repeat the question so everybody can hear them. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Right now. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, right now. It's too close. I couldn't see it. Yeah. Uh... I, I think many of the issues that you raise in the film, they might be fringe to most people in the world, but uh, to African Americans, the experiences that you brought up are very, uh, they figure into conversation a lot. I wonder, based on that, how organic was your process of storytelling? Like, how much research did you actually have to do, and how much did you draw from your friends within the black American community? in detailing who Ruby was, uh, and what her experience of having an incarcerated husband is. Sure. Um, so the question, thank you for the question, was about uh, the, the, the screenwriting process. Um, and also part of it was about, uh, I don't know, just addressing the universality and the specificity of this film, is what I think you're asking me. Um, so yes, interviewed over a, a hundred women who are dealing with incarceration, whether it be having someone currently incarcerated or on parole or on probation. Um, and not only spouses, but um, mothers, daughters, sisters. Um, all kinds of women of, of all colors, backgrounds, creeds, and ages that were dealing with incarceration and, uh, and really the commonalities that they um, shared with me, which was, you know, the loneliness, the, uh, the kind of feeling segregated even within their own families, um, just the um, kind of the, the emotional segregation that happens and this whole phenomenon of becoming imprisoned to yourself as you serve time with your with your loved ones. So that's really what we explore through it. And I think that, you know, for me, uh, this film is, um, you know, really about separation, um, you know, more than specifically about, you know, uh, only the incarcerated and, and their loved ones who are separated, but also just exploring how it feels when we lose love, um, when we're separated from the thing that anchors us and kind of that identity crisis that happens whether it's through a death, a divorce, an incarceration, you know, all kinds of ways that we become separated from those that we love. So that was kind of the core of the story for me. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question about how we shot that shot. I guess this is a question for the director or the actors. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a movie that used so many close-ups mm -hmm. of, of the faces to like, show them. I want to know how hard that you're making it 
worse, sir. <laughs> Um, for me, very hard, very intimidating, um, all of that. I just, I wasn't, during the process of shooting it, I really didn't know the moments she was going to be that close. I didn't know the moments um, when she was filming. I didn't know she was filming, filming as many silences as, as she did. So I really wasn't aware. Um, and the, the times when she told me, there were, there were a couple scenes when she said, okay, I mean, the camera's going to be here. And when the camera is here, I said, oh, she was serious. The camera's right here. Um, so, so it took some, some, uh, some getting used to, you know. Um, but ultimately, I trusted Ava. I trusted what was to come out of that. I, I knew that I couldn't worry about, you know, the pimple here and the, the strand of hair that was out of place here. Um, I just trusted her, I trusted uh, the character and the woman that she was and allowed that to, to lead me. I guess I'll answer the same question. Um, I mean, for, for me, in, in terms of when I first read the script, I, I um, yes, I'm English by the way. Um, <laughs> Weird memories for the silence guy. I know you think. Um, okay. Uh, so, so, but when I read the script, one of the, that was one of the things I really loved about reading the script. Is it, it, it was as much about what people are saying as what they they don't say. It's it, you know this is a film that is about waiting. It's 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 about what happens in between taking action. So um, I felt that you know what, what the gentleman commented on was an, a very apt way of, of um, conveying that, you know, what, what's happening in people's minds, in people's bodies, in people's lives when they are in a state of, of waiting. I particularly love that scene where um, Lorraine Toussaint, who plays uh, Emmy's mother in the film, when she's really going at her at that dinner table and you just can see Emmy Atsi dying inside as her mom is just pummeling away at her and that in and of itself, there's so much history in that. You can tell it happened when she was six, when she was 16, and you know, and, um, and I think that that's what cinema is, uh, you know, predominantly over, over theatre, um, over novels, it's, it's you're telling stories through the image. English. <laughs> yes. Uh, there, yeah, there's two, per, uh, two people, so what? Uh, you first. Okay. All right. The story arc is very interesting. Why did you decide to reveal uh, visually what happened to Derek at the end of the film? Yeah, so why, why did you decide to reveal what happened to Derek at the end of the film? Right. Um, I decided to reveal what happened with Derek at the end of the film because it's not Derek's story, it's Ruby's story. So it really doesn't matter what happened to him at the end of the film, it, it matters what happened to her through the process. And that was a real, real conscious choice. And either it would work or it didn't work. And for some people, you know, it just doesn't work. You want to know so badly what he did. But for me, you know, I'm really trying to force the point and make it clear that I want you to focus on her. This is a woman's story, you know. I mean, so often we see these scenes, you know, on television shows and in film where it's a prison drama and you're watching the, the visiting scene, and then we follow the man back into the prison and it becomes his story. And this is really her story, and uh, and that's where we want the focus to be. So, sir, right there. Yeah, you. <laughs> Oh, no, you're girl, sorry. I have, light, I have the light in my eyes, so I don't really see much. And you have short hair, right? Okay. <laughs> for the actor who plays Derek, actually, um, how did you prepare for a role where most of the time, since it looks like you're somewhat active, um, that you're just sitting and all your performance is like just chest up? <laughs> Tell us about the preparation. 
Well, you know, I uh, I sat in the chair a lot. <laughs> um, you know, my my only scenes are with Emigazzi and, and Sharon Lawrence. Uh, I happen to be sitting with the scene with Sharon Lawrence as well. Um, you know, Ava's challenge to me, and I, I speak about this often. Her challenge to me was just to basically. Um, which is not an easy task, but basically to just make this character as empathetic as possible. You know, for us to take his journey um, via the journey of Emma Yahtzee's character, for us to take the journey with him and to feel like minus or less a couple wrong turns, you know, everything could be better. And that he really, really um, means well and, and, and wants the best for not only himself, but for his, his wife as well. And, and so all of those things were uh, to the question earlier asked about um, putting the weight of the performances out of us three and the other actors just in the eyes. I think that was the biggest challenge for me because obviously I didn't have an opportunity to really walk much further than when they let me out of jail and, and I, I make it to her. So every moment really mattered, you know, when I, when I embrace uh, Ruby, it's such a huge deal for me because every you know the stakes are already high um, when you're playing a part uh, but the stakes are even higher when you're playing a part where your only physicality is within 17 to 20 feet so um, I really wanted to uh, answer Ava's challenge with just these eyes you know and I think any average to good actor um, we know that the gift that we bring to the table as actors is, is our eyes you know and the performance is often overrated if the writing is so good so her writing was really, really good, and uh, and I had a great tennis player, you know, and and then Yahtzee, so I was able to play tennis and, and just sit there and be still, and, and that's the way I like to perform anyway. Being a poet, that was perfect for me. So, good question. Yes, right there. Yep. I just had a, I just... Oh, no, that's you. Yeah, okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you because I mean this past summer we dealt with a lot of losing a lot of um, men in our communities and our neighborhoods to uh, gun violence, both losing them, losing their lives, and also losing them because they've been locked up for a variety of reasons. Um, and it's, I mean, it's been on our minds a lot. We've been having conversations for the past three months every every day about this, and and it's really it's really important for us, I guess, to see uh, the stories of like our mothers and our sisters and our best friends because that is what's happening to us now. and so often what happens to the women in the lives of those men those narratives are, are very much missing and you don't see the nuances and the complexity that you see really so thank you thank you yes if I can say if I can just say I think people were laughing about because I couldn't hear you but what the young sister said was that her community, um, because of violence and other mitigating factors in where she lives, that there is a loss of men to incarceration and to death by violence. Is that not what you said, sister? And that, um, and that this, this has been a conversation that the women have been talking about quite seriously and trying to figure out how to deal with that. And, uh, and she appreciated the story and being able to see that same story play out um, in, other, in another community. So thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. I think they were laughing about this. Um, two questions is one, do you work out? <laughs> the guy plays Darren. His arms. And and on a more serious note, um, can you just talk more about the relationship between the mother and the two sisters? Um, I I couldn't really understand why she wouldn't speak up for her, Ruby wouldn't speak up to her mother. I, I just I I didn't really grasp what was going on. Yeah, the relationship between the mother and the two uh, daughters is... Sure. Let's answer the first one first. Do you work out? <laughs> uh, I work out, yes. <laughs> yes sir. Um, the, um, the relationship between the Ruby and her mother. Um, that relationship was... Um, a bit of a highlight of what had been going on between them prior to any of any of this with with her husband. Um, 
For me, it kind of highlighted relationships that I've seen play out between mothers and daughters and sisters where there are just so many expectations, whatever that may be, but some kind of expectation that's just not met. And as a result, um, you know, for mothers anyway, there's just a feeling of, of disappointment. But they may not always realize how that is, is being um, given off to, to their child. And so in Ruby's case, with her mother, it always been a very, a very uh, strained relationship. And that came to, to terms even more once her husband is locked up because then her mother really feels like, what are you doing? You know, she had all these goals and plans and dreams, and uh, her mother felt like, you know, you're wasting all of that, waiting for someone. So it, it's just a matter of taking the time to understand, to, to learn someone, rather than just placing your own expectations on them. And I believe that was Ruby's true um, issue with her mother, was that she really didn't take the time to understand her. I um, yeah, I wanted to ask the actors, um, you guys have such incredible chemistry in both relationships, and I wanted to ask, what did you work on to get that, because it was like you had really been together for that long? Um, so she was asking how we, uh, you know, uh, conjured up the chemistry between us as, as characters in terms of, I guess, our relationship, and then uh, Emmy Atsi and uh, Omari's relationship as well. I think for us, you know, we just felt so privileged to be part of this project because of the writing. Um, so much of it was on the page. Um, you know, I'd like to say to you that we did tons of rehearsal and lots of improvisation and all that, but we, you know, we really didn't. It was it was so on the page, and and Ava was very very clear about her vision for the story um, in terms of, and it was there in the production design, in the costumes, on the sets. That there were just there was just there was just too many clues in a sense for us as actors um, to guide us. So I, I I you know I really feel like we we a per, it was a perfect setting to get the film the film right. And then uh, we actually really liked each other, which is <laughs> which doesn't always happen uh, when you're doing a film. Um, you know I personally uh, obviously a lot of my scenes were with. Emma Yatsi, and uh, you know, I, I hadn't seen any of her work before. I met her a few times before we did the film, but I just, I was truly blown away by her, her talent. I really, really was. And, and um, you know, to get to, to act with someone um, who is just that vulnerable and strong and giving and gifted, um, for me, it was, it just made it so, so easy. So I'd like to say we did lots of work, but you know, we kind of did it on the day and it ended up on the screen. That was my experience anyway. Um, to piggyback David's point, we it was a very, it was a sprint of a film. Um, how long, Howard? Hello. Unlike major motion Hollywood motion uh, <laughs> movies that take months and months and months and months to uh, film and make, these guys dove in head first. The film that you just shot, saw was shot in 19 days. <laughs> Ava, like she spoke about, we had worked prior together. So, um, and Emmy, Emmy Yassi and I knew each other for years. We've known each other, very good friends. And so it was an opportunity to just extend that friendship and to just, and we're fans of each other. Um, like David said, you know, we just, we fan, I really, really support her and respect her as a person, first and foremost, as a woman, and um, as a budding superstar actress. And so it was fun to just play in. Ava trusted my six days of work. Yeah. I think I worked for six days, so um, we just went in, and we're very, very blessed, as, as David said, to have such a leading lady as Emmy. So mm -hmm. that's my take. Emmy probably doesn't need to answer the question now. <laughs>
I love love stories, and I was really interested in exploring a story that was about lost love and how we handle that. And it's set in a, in a community that I grew up in. I grew up in Compton, California. Um, and the working people that are there, and, uh, and just uh, the ordinary life of Compton as opposed to the Compton that you may see in rap songs and you know, so forth. Um, and so, yeah, just, a, just a, a stew of a lot of things that I was thinking about in terms of, of love and relationships, uh, shared humanity between folks of all colors and creeds, and then also really wanting to show um, you know, my community. And part of my community is you know, disproportionate rates of incarceration that infect um, families and, um, and legacies and memories, and it's really a brutal, brutal system. Um, and I wanted to show uh, the invisible victims, you know, the women in waiting. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, startling statistics. Millions of women are, are dealing with this. And um, it's eroding to the human spirit. And it's not often talked about their side of things. Um, so that, that's what it was about. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. There weren't a lot of technical questions. Sometimes at various festivals, uh, we have a lot of filmmakers. Um, who want to talk about camera use and editing and producers. So I always want to make sure that our producing team and the filmmakers that made the film with me are here. So if anyone has any questions afterward, you want to ask any of these brilliant people, Paul Carnes or Howard Barish or Spencer Averick or Delane Jones, uh, about filmmaking, if you're a filmmaker, they'll be here. Otherwise, thank you for coming. Let me say one thing. Let's have thing. <laughs> if you're American, any Americans in the house? A few Americans. We're like, we're Americans. <laughs> <laughs> um, Save with pride! Um, this film opens October 12th. This, we are now, since September 12th, we're 30 days from our theatrical release. And, um, and it is a scary process, and it is a big deal, and we are partnered with participant on this, um, but we are both you know, companies that have humble roots, and we are, maybe not humble roots, but <laughs> humble um, spirits. And um, and all that to say, you're not going to see billboards in Times Square on this film. It is going to be hand hand, you know, uh, word of mouth, uh, heart to heart, Facebook to Facebook, tweet, Twitter to Twitter. Please tweet. Please join us on Facebook. Please check us out at TakePart.com uh, to know more about our social action campaign. Please spread the word. It's the only way that we'll be able to share this film with more people. So anyway, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being here to support the film. I also want to remind you that you can vote for the film by dropping your ticket in one of the boxes outside, or you can go online and uh, enter your number that's on the, your ticket. I also want to thank the volunteers who are doing a fantastic job for this festival. So, yeah, give them a round of applause. And I wish you a good time in Toronto until the 16th. Thank you. Just like six. Yeah, that's true. Like, shots. Like.